You guys, it's official. We have an Omnipod 5 app. It's here. You're not dreaming. This isn't an alternate universe or reality. It's here. After years of waiting, it has arrived. I wanna get all the information out to you guys as soon as possible, just from my perspective, which I'm just a user of the system. I'm not part of any affiliate program, and I was not one of those lucky people that got to have access to the app or try it out or anything like that. I have been right there with everyone being like, where is this app? I mean, it feels like genuinely years. We've been waiting for this. Without further ado, I'll talk you through my first impressions. I will cut in where appropriate all the screen recordings for what it was like getting things set up, go through the ease of transition, and as well do that precious side-by-side -side comparison with the controller and the iPhone. So again, this is very, very first impressions, obviously, but I wanted to make sure to get something out there as soon as possible because this is like, <laughs> This is like bre the breaking news of diabetes, in my opinion. So, you know, special report, breaking news. I should have the ticker down here. So the first thing I have to shout from the rooftops before I even go into this is when you set up the Omnipod 5 app and you start a pod on there, you are restarting and resetting that algorithm. All those precious months of building that algorithm out so that when you use your Omnipod 5 in automated mode, it's doing those dynamic basal calculations. That is all reset. I know for some people that's extremely frustrating because it's taken them a while to kind of train the algorithm and get to grips with it all. So big disclaimer there, only change the iPhone app if you are ready and willing to take that on. Just from a visual first impressions perspective, I love the layout. I think it's very clean. I think it's very intuitive. Yes, things are in different places than where they were on the controller, but it's really, really, really intuitive and easy to navigate. In terms of the ease of the switchover itself, it was, again, very straightforward, very similar to setting up the controller. You're gonna be putting in everything from scratch, your correction factors to your basal rates, which will be that jumping off point for the algorithm to learn from, your insulin duration, max bolus, max hourly basal rate level, all that. So when you do the switchover, make sure you have that time to really sit down side by side with your controller, which is what I did, and make sure you're putting in all those details exactly as your doctor has set them up with you. So some people may even want to do this with their doctor's help, and I would completely understand that and support that, actually. I've just gone rogue, which is pretty standard MO for me. <laughs> Something I will also add is I was in the middle of a Dexcom session, and I was able to simply add the transmitter to the Omnipod 5 app, and it took about 20 minutes for it to hook up, but once it did, no problem. So I didn't have to stop my Dexcom and start a new one, if that makes sense. It was able to pick up mid-session. But what I will say is you have to start a new pod. You cannot transfer over an active pod. So you're gonna wanna switch over to the app when you are due to switch over to your pod or when you are willing to end a pod early in order to get uh, the app going. When you first start the app, it's going to prompt you to watch a video, which is a little bit of training, a very great side-by-side -side comparison of where things are. That is like a nice, nice holy grail video. And something I suggest and something that I did was I screen recorded my iPhone whilst that video was playing. So that gives me something to refer back to if ever I have any questions. Obviously I screen recorded it too, to be able to show you clips here but you're never gonna regret having too much information, but you might regret thinking, oh, what did that video say? You know. So for me, that's just an easy little hack to be able to refer back when you're watching some of these very first startup videos that they have you watch. Something that is totally new and specific to the app only, and I didn't realize this was coming out. Uh, I don't know if there were rumblings of this, but it's called Custom Foods. And what this allows you to do is plug in custom foods. For example, I'll show you an example here of 
say I'm always eating one apple, one medium-sized apple. It's got 25 grams of carbohydrate. I looked it up on the internet. I've tried and tested it. That's the, that's the carb content. I can add that as a custom food so that when I go to eat an apple, all I do is go into custom foods from the bolus. That bolus menu, you can click custom foods, and then that is going to allow you to check whatever item or items of food that you're eating, and then automatically add it to the carb calculator, which I think is super, super interesting, especially for those meals that you eat over and over and over again. Very cool. That's going to be a very interesting function to use and grow over time those list of custom foods. I'm gonna be really interested to see how that kind of plays out. But from what I see so far, I really, really like it. So it's really just an easy way to associate an amount of carbohydrate with a food and then add it to the calculator. And I think that is super, super neat actually. And I'm gonna be really interested and seeing how that works and how much easier that it's gonna make life. I think it has, it has a good chance to make it like quite a bit easier in an interesting way, which is exciting to me. You know, I don't have the same information showing exclusively because there's not an active pod associated with this controller anymore and there is with the iPhone app. So in terms of the visual of the actual first impressions, it is a bit of a different interface but all those things that you need, you can intuit pretty darn easily, in my opinion. You can see the mode up here is automated. That used to live somewhere up here. There are notifications there with the little bell, whereas you have the little bell notifications down here now. Insulin on board used to show up here, and very similarly, it's showing up there now too. Your sensor values are kind of front and center and bold here, whereas they used to be here. The bolus button on the controller was here previously, now it's here and it's a nice big rectangle for you to tap on. This is where you've got your bolus screen. You can use sensor values to have that plugged in and you know it'll show you the calculations and say I want to put in 15 or 18 grams let's say it's going to spit out that calculation very similarly to what it was like on the controller. Something I will say that I found with the controller was I found it to be a little bit buggy sometimes. Sometimes, like there, I did not, I absolutely did not mean to enter in BG value. I didn't mean to hit that. But that just kind of happened a lot for me. I don't know if other people experienced that. Whereas obviously with the iPhone, you get that smooth transition of the screens. I appreciate that a lot. It's just very intuitive. You go into the menu, that's where you can switch modes, set temp basal if you're in manual mode, activity, pod, enter BG, pause insulin. You know, and this is where all your settings are gonna be, but you're not even gonna be able to get to this screen until you do those bulk initial setup settings. So this is where you could add, for example, another basal rate profile. You can go in and make adjustments, all that kind of thing. I must say I quite like the insulin on board and the last bolus both being up here as opposed to kind of so far apart here. It just seems more intuitive to me. And that insulin on board, there have been a few times that have been few, but nevertheless they've happened where I have thought the insulin on board was the last bolus amount, and I actually have sort of mistakenly and more aggressively bolused than I intended to. I like this. I think a lot of it is cleaner and more intuitive, and perhaps even easier for, I would imagine, a child to use maybe even. Another thing is you can tap the Dexcom screen down here if you wanna see different amounts of time and you can turn it on its side to get a more full view of the graph however as you can see that is not going to work for me because I've got it locked in that portrait mode so there's the famous face ID even though I just flipped out and turned off that portrait mode it's asking for that face ID so that's a very good example of what I was talking about but now that it's locked out of that mode now I'm getting that full 
graph. I don't know if there's a way to access that graph without having to take your phone out of that lock mode, which I know a lot of people utilize. I'll keep you posted on that. I love the fact that you can use Face ID because that means I'm not constantly, as I was over here, plugging in my super high secret code of 8888. I simply did that because it was easiest for me to quickly hit. But oftentimes, just as I did there, I did it wrong. I didn't hit it four times. I hit it five times, yada, yada, yada. So, you know, another kind of way that this is just that little bit easier to utilize, and I love that. And I know I've mentioned this too, but that custom foods will show up right there, and then I can just click Apple, and then that automatically is going to get added to the calculator, that 25 grams. Use sensor. There we go. There are my calculations. And I think, well, I can't, un I can't unclick it, which is interesting. So you would have to cancel that out if you wanted to remove the carbs and come back in. But you can see over time, as this gets populated, I believe you'll be able to click multiple items which is going to be very interesting to be able to feed that calculator. Then I see sort foods up here. Okay, alphabetical, recently added, highs to lowest, lowest to highs. Interesting. Hey, even think if you were like, I wanted to have a lower carb snack, and I can't remember, like, what do I usually eat? And if you had all the food you ever ate in here, you could do it lowest to highest, and you could say, oh, well, these are the lowest carb count snacks. I'm going to opt for one of those. This could even become a bit more of a Bible in terms of food options, I guess, in a lot of ways. It's just come to me now thinking about that. That is a neat feature, I think. And just to flip around, show you alerts, history. Obviously, I've only run it for a couple hours now. Sweet, sweet 100% sensor and range. That will change. Um, then, you know, click on the pod. That will give you the pod information, view pod details, that will give you a little bit more information, and that will also be where you can change your pod. So, pretty darn intuitive, in my opinion. So all in all, those are my first impressions. I know it is going to be a little bit cumbersome for some, and it is an annoyance to have to restart that algorithm. That is an unfortunate detail that they just, I guess, couldn't carry over to the app. But in order for this to go fully to the iPhone without having to carry around that controller as well, it's worth it to me. I'm going to go for it, clearly. And I'm just so happy that the app is as intuitive and beautiful as I hoped that it was going to be. I feel very confident and comfortable using it straight away. Yes, things are in different positions and, you know, it might take some getting used to, but I feel really, really confident that it's going to be very intuitive for those existing Omnipod 5 members that are coming over from the controller, but also in general. And we got that extra little cherry on top of the custom foods, which I think is going to be very interesting to play around with. And you know what? It might even make me a little bit more of a disciplined carb counter, which, I mean, <laughs> could probably use that to be perfectly honest with you. So that's going to be something that I will play around with and make more content on, but I just wanted to share this and get it out there as soon as possible so that you guys that are jumping in or thinking about jumping in or considering when to jump in have as much information as I can possibly give you at this time. And for those of you who are new here, I have a lot of Omnipod 5 content that I will link down below and I'll try to put some cards up above. So in case you're interested, those will be there for the taking. And if you have any questions, let me know down below. If you've started it, let me know your experience down below. Let's get a conversation going. Let's help each other out in whatever way possible. As always, I want that to be just as much of a resource on this channel as this video is because the community is way more on top of it than I can ever be as one human being. And with all that being said, I wish you guys a wonderful day wherever you are in this world. I wish you great blood sugars, smooth transitions onto the app if that's something that you're doing or considering wherever, whenever you do it. I wish you smooth transitions. 
But most of all, and as always, I wish you a happy, healthy mind with it all. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.